Christmas. Greetings, I am Rob Chappers and welcome to the Monkey Lord's Christmas Cavern Christmas special of joy and, and wonder. I am Rob Chappers, aka the Monkey Lord, occasionally known as that. And today is going to be a day of just pure awesomeness and Christmas joy and love to all of you special people out there who feel the Christmas vibe, partly because Star Wars is out in the cinemas and I can't wait to go and see it. Please don't spoil it for me. But also just because things are good at the moment. It's slightly cold. I have an assistant elf. And I'm in a cavern made of amplifiers. Things are good here in Christmas land. So coming up, we got some cool things. We got some reviews. That's one thing of some things that I think you've never ever probably seen before because I've never seen them before. Till a really interesting and slightly randomly crazy guy came up to a gig on my last tour and said, "I make these pedals at home. I'd really like you to try them out. Could you try them out, please?" And I was like, "Okay, yeah, no problem. Leave me one, and I'll try it out." And he gave me a bag of four. Uh, eight of them. So so I've got eight pedals from a Courtney company for you all to take a look at really briefly. Um, I've got some beta testing strings that Diodario sent me. Uh, a really cool little novelty random thing. And then just a whole bunch of banter. Because uh, I did ask my Facebook page to supply me with questions. They supplied in vast hordes of suppliance. That sentence made more sense than my mum. So now uh, I just wanted to talk about pickups really briefly because I've had some exciting changes to my, my rig. As you guys know, I'm a Seymour Duncan Loveham guy and been using Seymour Duncan for ages. I still am, but I allow myself some experimentation sometimes. So in the neck, I've got a Seymour Duncan. It's uh, Duncan Distortion, SH something. But in the bridge, I changed to a bare knuckle war pig in this one. Um, I got a nail bomb, I think, in my blue one, just to see what the tone was like and just to have a bit of a change, because it's Christmas, so we're allowed to change at Christmas. And I'm really, really happy with the squealies and um, that kind of thing. Let me see if I can do some squealies for you. Elf, activate the squealie mechanism. <laughs> Thank you, Elf. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so I just enjoy, A, the way they look, uh, I noticed that Rabir was using them when we were on tour and some of you will know that he slaves my amplifier occasionally which means that he takes it over and plays through his and mine when I'm singing parts and he was using a war pig and it sounded sick through my, my red dwarf. Incidentally today I'm using the Christmas back from Victory uh, otherwise known as the silver back but Christmas back sounded way cooler because it's Christmas. It's Christmas! <laughs> Incidentally, that was the Hog Roast, which I felt was a particularly Christmassy named pedal from this new uh, pedal company that I'm going to be showing you very shortly. Be excited. Maybe get yourself a festive beverage of some kind, caffeinated or not, and a pie. And also look forward to Christmas recipes uh, with myself and my uh, uh, elf compadre Amber, who will be helping me in the recipe section of this program, brought to you completely unrehearsed, in case you hadn't noticed that it was unrehearsed. Do you like my grotto? Could you, could you like and share for the grotto that was built? There's a tree behind me being lit by, I think it's some kind of ecclesiastical building, but I can't tell because it's so and so lit up and so sparkly that it just takes over the entire ambience of the room. Anyway, let's start with review number one. I have something called a jam jar. So I'd never seen these before until my friend uh, Danish Pete, 
who you probably would have seen some of the Andertons reviews, went, hey man, you got to check out this thing, F right the P, it's amazing, it's great, it's things, and then other Danish stuff I didn't understand. The jam jar, ingredients, a bit of this, a bit of that. Direction, add a guitar and a bit of talent. Well, we've got a problem there. The jam jar's output will power any 8 to 16 ohm cab, including a 4x12, all from this jar. Caution, it's made of glass. So it's, um, it's a tiny amplifier in a jam jar. Uh, 10 out of 10 for an innovative, cool, fun idea. Um, let's just see how it sounds. <laughs> Amber Elf, please come hither and hold my jam jar. Thus. Actually, maybe if you hold it slightly towards this beautiful Rode NT-USB microphone, they'll be able to hear its pleasant, dulcet tones. Well, currently it sounds like an amplifier in a jar. Let's plug it into, <laughs> let's plug it into a 4x12 cabinet, do you think? And we'll see how it sounds. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> I think that's a testament to what, how much of a difference a 4x12 cab makes, or a good 4x12 cab. Actually, we're going into an orange PPC 4x12 412. PPC 412. Um, and it transforms the tone. Obviously, I could be putting pedals through it. I've got it cabled up so that that would currently be a pain in my ass. But um, sounds good. <laughs> Yes, it's got Christmas tone, folks. Well, for me, I'm going to give that 7.5 polar bears out of 10 polar bears for being a Christmas stocking filling win of a gift and probably fairly affordable, although I have no affinity with the company at all and I have no idea how much it costs. But I think it's a nice, cool Christmassy vibe of an idea. <laughs> Amber Elf, please reconnect my Christmas back. <laughs> Thank you, Amber Elf. Okay. People ask me questions and I'll answer for you now. So, question number one from a man called Robert Payne. That's, that's his face. Happy Christmas to you, Rob. Um, <clears throat> he said, when asked about favourite albums in 2015, you didn't mention Joe Satriani's Shockwave, Supernova, presuming you'd heard it. What do you think? Uh, actually haven't really heard it. So I don't know what to think yet, but I am excited to, to listen to that and to watch the new Star Wars film. Um, presuming again you know of, of about this, did you know uh, Peter Capaldi played a Yamaha guitar in the latest Doctor Who? I didn't, but I do think it's really cool um, that modern culture is including more guitar playing because it helps people to pick up a guitar and realise that it's the best thing they could do with their lives.
Well, one of the best things they could do with their lives. There are many other things that are much better to do with your life. Uh, ben Milford. Hey, Rob. Just wondering if you will be doing a Chapman tour of the UK. Would love to see you in Liverpool. Uh, and if you do, please bring Joe from Riff City Guitar with you, if you do. Um, I don't know if there's that much... We did do a Chapman tour, and we went up north, and I guess you must have missed it, Ben. Uh, we probably will do another one, but it wouldn't be like the American one. I don't think we could afford to grab a massive tour bus and bomb it around England. Um, the reason for the bus is really that America is so vastly huge um, that we, we need it to sleep on, really. But it's a good idea and a nice, pleasant concept. Gordon Melsmone. Hey, Gordon Melsmone. Hey, Rob. Hey, Gordon. First off... Thanks for the years of great YouTube. You are more than welcome, Broface. It's gotten me through a lot of tough times, and honestly, it's taught me a lot of what I know about guitars and playing. You're welcome, and thank you very much for saying that. My question is, what's the best exercise to get used to different areas of the neck or keys and scales? I've got just the exercise for you. It's called... It's called the Blizzard Fist. And what you do is you start off by playing Hearthstone as much as you possibly can... And then take any three-dimensional octave shape, starting with a trifecta tonal situation, first finger, second finger, third finger, or first, second, and third, a little, or first, second, third, and a little, any shape, and just go up and down the strings, and then move position and do the same thing until you cover the entire fretboard like this. <laughs> And you'll see, you, when you reach the ultimate Blizzard Fist level, you, that's what happens. So hopefully that will have been of use to you. Um, in, a more, in a more serious note, I think it's important for you to do pentatonic scales, learn the five positions of the pentatonic, I know you haven't, and do them up the neck and down the neck and move them around. So you want to go like, for example, from one, um, let me just play slightly quieter so that I don't annoy everybody. <laughs> And then two, and then three, and then four, etc. Five, and then after five, you get one again. So if your five, for example, was here, I modulated for you, just because I figured you'd want to play from twelve. Then you start one, and you carry on, yeah. So and that way you can cover the whole fretboard in it's the same scale but different shapes of areas in which you can play it. I hope that was of use to you. Ben Kiersey. Hi, Rob. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you, Ben. Merry Feast of Wintervale. My question is, if you could give any advice to somebody looking to get into the industry, what would it be? Now, I actually have a video planned in whence I will be discussing this at length, giving you my top 10 ways to make a living from being a guitar player, because there are lots and lots and lots of different ways. But the essence of that video will simply be... You want to do as many things as you can to bring an in income, no matter how small, because that way you'll always be safe. So, for example, I make an income from seven or eight different areas that all pay me a bit of money every month, and that adds up to be an income that, that you can live on. If you just try and make a living from one thing, that's I, I admire your braveness, um, but if that one thing goes away, you've got a problem and you've got kids to feed, maybe, or you've got dog to feed, maybe, or yourself to feed, definitely. So the best advice is to do lots of things. Teach, session, do little pit clinics for orchestras, do, you know, do everything you physically possibly can uh, to make a living. Even, for example, I used to do um, restrings and setups for students that just couldn't string their own guitar. And I would do it in front of them to show them, but then I would charge them for the strings plus a bit more and then for the time. And that would make me £10 an hour. So just any way you can, without ripping people off, try and make money, uh, and then you'll, you'll be good. You'll be fine. I think the other thing is, you've got to really, really want the hard work. You don't just... Like, I, I get paid to ride the bus. I play on stage for free kind of vibe. You've got to enjoy hard work, because it is very much, definitely, hard work. Good luck to you. <laughs>
So, uh, welcome to this segment of the show, which is called How to Make a Festive Christmas Beverage that you'll all enjoy. <laughs> and today I thought we'd make a uh, mince pie milkshake, which is one of my favourites that I've never tried before, but I thought would be funny. So, you need yourself a great blender. Any blender will do. Uh, start with, let's put some mince pies in. Thank you, Amber Elf. Next, add your favourite milk beverage. Preferably not bovine mammary fluid though. Try something a bit different and Christmassy, maybe almond milk. That's already smelling delicious, I can tell you. If you're um, a person that enjoys an alcoholic beverage or two, you could also add rum or brandy or whiskey. I'd probably add fireball to this if I had any available to me now, but I don't. Next, add a lid. I once learned that that's an important thing to do <laughs> by accident. Then... I think it's on wonky. It's on... Oh yeah, you're on wonky. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you for mentioning that. Otherwise, it would have been really funny when this got flung across the room. Is this on? It's good. Ready? Now blitz it. <laughs> then blitz it really fast. No, actually, as you can see, it's slightly jizzed on my shoulder, but that's fine because here in Santa Claus, the bear land, polar land of Winterfell, it's good that things like that are good, good family values. Anyway, now this blender is so fast that I, had I left it on the oh, high, it smells of pie on my shoulder. If I'd left it on the high setting, it would have turned it into a hot soup because it cooks it so fast. Let me just do it one more, one more little bit of a blend. And then I'll taste it for you. Okay, now then. I'll take this bit, you take that bit. Oh, thank you. Should I get glasses? Uh, yeah, get a glass. Great idea. Okay, let's see how this turned out. It certainly smells like something. <laughs> certainly smells amazing. Oh, that's a velvety smooth dream of a beverage that Amber's going to try for you. <laughs> How is it, Amber? Mm. <laughs> is it alright? It's okay. Can you describe it in ten words? I only need one. Christmas. I only need one Christmas. You've got four words left. <laughs> It tastes of shit would do, or... <laughs> right, let me try it. It's actually really good. It's not bad. It just needs a shot of rum or brandy or something. Mm. It makes me feel warm inside. Gary Keller says, Will you ever expand what Chapman guitar models are available in left-handed versions, or would it stay just two models? Well, Gary... Uh, you and many others will be very excited to hear, unless you've already heard, that I had an idea and I figured it would be really cool um, if we did a collaborative vote for a left-handed guitar. So next year there will be a vote, only for Southpaws. Of course I can't stop right-handed people from, from voting, they're welcome to vote if they want to, but it's going to be a left-handed guitar so it won't be much good for them. And it can be any, any shape that we currently offer and it can be any colour and all sorts of woods. So you could end up with a bright purple twin-necked eight-string fan fret ghost fret. Oh, That would be amazing. And that's fine, whatever works. And it would be available just for lefties and we'll probably do that regularly because, um, or maybe every year, because I think it's way better to give left-handed players their own vote and their own choice than it is to just say, here's a left-handed version of something that we make that we think might sell. Because the truth of the matter is, we, we don't sell left-handed guitars. I mean, we do, we have them on offer, but people don't buy them. Uh, I think the, it's, it's a bit of a shame. We, we really wanted to make everything available and left-handed, but they just didn't sell. They sat in the store and they're still there. So from, from a business marketing point of view, it's not always a great idea for us to do that. But we'll make it better by doing one a year, probably one a year, uh, of whatever left-handed community would like. And the more of them get involved, the cooler it will be. And I really hope that will be a great success. Would you like to see some new products, ladies and gentlemen? I thought you would. Let me show you what I've got on the floor. So Amber Elf now has the camera. 
Um, I thought I'd show you some of the things I've got on the floor. So this is uh, comfort through sound. Bring it in, Amber Elf. Bring it in. Let's show them. So we've got a bunch of really interesting pedals. We've got the Shark Nado. Obviously, this is a TU3 from Boss, which sounds like this. Good. Uh, Shark Nado. Oh, wait a minute. I've just realized I haven't plugged my guitar into the input of my, my TU3. Uh, we're now plugged back in and everything's fine. So we've got the Shark Nado. We've got Don't Eat Yellow Snow. <laughs> we've got Hog Roast. We've got Fuzzy Head. Sparkle Booster. I don't know why that was the accent for Sparkle Booster, but it was. Dirty Ego. AM Radio. And my favorite of the lot, a Magic Box. Now, even though I didn't know what it did or what it was for because there were zero instructions, I wanted it because it was called Magic Box. It reminded me of a program I used to watch when I was a little boy. Uh, that was the chair in the amp. Not, not my ass, by the way. Sorry. Um, I used to watch this program and there were these rap people and somebody's going to comment what, the, what it was, but it was a Christmassy thing and the tree came to life and tried to kill this kid and it scarred me forever, but it was brilliant. Um, something about going through a painting. I don't know. Maybe I'm on drugs for the first time in my life. So uh, let's start by showing you the Shark Nado. So this has a boost function or not. I've actually played with all of them. And just to get this quickly down for you, here is the amplifier, which is the, the Christmas back <laughs> uh, without. Just a kind of cleany, mild crunch if I dig in. And with the Sharknado, it sounds quite shark-like. I like that, it's kind of teethy, kind of sharky. That's why he's named it that. Moving on, Don't Eat Yellow Snow has two modes, white or yellow. <laughs> well, that seems effective. That's sick, that sounds great. Let me put it to the yellow mode. I think it's just a slightly more warm version. No, no, so, so the yellow mode is a brighter option. And that's where we were. That sounds great. Okay, one of my favorites of the lot this is the comfort through sound hog roast, which sounds like this. Great, great tone. That's got a really, really, really good tone. You know what? I think my buddy Captain Lee would like that. Moving along, Magic Box. It's always, always in the loop. Um, <clears throat> I did phone up or speak to Comfort Through Sound, and they said, Kind of put it where you want, but better at the beginning of the chain. I liked it here in my chain, which is kind of halfway through. And what it does is it sort of um, adds back in 
some of the bright tones that you, you lose when using lots and lots of cable. Now I am using lots and lots of cable here because I've got nine pedals in my loop and a bunch of other pedals going on. But let me just quickly read um, what the lovely man from Comfort Through Sound told me. Essentially, it replaces the highs that you lose through the capacitance and the cables. And I found most booth boost overdrive and distortion pedals, but really well with it. Um, so yeah, it's that's what it does. It adds back in some of the high end you lose through using lots and lots of cables. I don't normally use a lot of cables or a big board, but I'm gonna be. So I might keep the magic box. Moving along, we have the AM radio. This does exactly what you think it's gonna do. It makes it sound like a radio. Now this is really cool for intros to songs live. So for example, if I leave it on before I start, kind of gives you that kind of dynamic shift. Better with gain actually, here's a bit of gain and it. So there you go, that's kind of a, I mean, for me, it's a bit of a one trick pony because I'm not gonna be using that tone anywhere ever again. Moving on, Dirty Ego. Dirty Ego, here's the amp without. Here's the Dirty Ego. Wait, Amber, I'll get a close up of my hand on the Dirty Ego. For it is dirty and ego-like. <laughs> That's a really, really, really smooth pedal. Did you notice how smooth it was? It's interesting. It's the first time, I think, in a long time I've, I've put on a pedal and asked myself, what is it, what is it cloned on? What is it like? I don't think it's cloned on anything. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's copying anything else. It's kind of got its own sound. That's unusual. Moving along, the Sparkle Booster. I think actually the Hog and the Dirty Ego are my favorites. This is great. The yellow is also good. Not such a fan of the Sharknado or the AM radio. Yeah. Five out of five. Yeah, it's all right. I didn't have quite enough of it in, that's what it was. I like it better with more of it in. Moving along the fuzzy head, this is exactly what you think it's gonna be. Show them the pedal, Amber Elf. It's yellow with a red knob. Can I also say, all of these knobs feel like a real uh, pot. They feel great, really sort of stiff to turn. Um, here it is, fuzzy head. <laughs> Great, but I think I'm spoilt with the uh, Jimi Hendrix Octavia that I've been using. Overall, I think they're great pedals. I think they're very well made, beautifully packaged. As you can see, the packaging on the floor down there was, was beautifully destroyed. 
<laughs> Probably my favourite are the Dirty Ego, the Dirty Yellow Snow, and the Hog Roast. I think they're really, really great. Now, I've put all of these through a clean channel. I noticed that when you put them through a gainy channel, um, that it was, it was overkill or didn't quite do what it needed to do. And actually, I read on the Comfort Through Sound site that he tries or, or sort of tests all of his pedals through two amps. An HT5, HT5 from Blackstar, or a Vox. And so I, I'm getting sort of their great through a driven clean channel vibe from the majority of these. And that's actually kind of what I was after. So I'm very happy with that. Well, Amber is currently adjusting my glowing house because it's making a really irritating kind of sound, a bit like a bear with a sore paw. Let's take some more of your questions. Thank you for sending me questions, by the way. I really appreciate it. Matt Gatehouse. Hey, bro. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Matt Gatehouse. How were you able to build such an undying fan base over time? Did you have a breakthrough moment? Uh, how did you go from a few thousand subscribers to one of the biggest guitar channels on YouTube? Also, any tips on how to promote and share your first public music release? How can I reach the biggest audience? Thanks, Rob, you're the man. You're the man, Matt. I didn't have a breakthrough moment. I, I just spent eight years just making videos like a nutcase because I, I got hooked, I got addicted to it, I really enjoyed it. Everyone has good points and bad points, things that they, they find easy and things they find difficult. I think the thing that, that the, the bonus element I had was that I love people and I really enjoy community and talking to people. And so when people would comment, I would comment back. And, I, and that meant that people got to know me quicker because I was engaged with the people that were chatting to me. You know, I'm an okay guitar player. I'm by no means the best. It's not to do with, with me being some kind of stellar interplanetary genius on the guitar. I'm okay. But it's, it's more to do with the fact that I, I spent a lot of time making thousands and thousands of videos and I like people and I respond to them and I talk to them. My advice for people trying to reach the biggest audience with a release, I mean, I guess I can give that because I released something, got number one, two countries and charted in 35 countries and hit the billboard, oh, which was great. Thank you very, very, very much to all of you people that made that happen. Um, my advice is just make sure that your recording is the best thing you can record, but don't spend years locking it away and not, you know, just doing it and doing it because I've seen so many musicians that, that ended up not releasing stuff because they just felt like, you know, it wasn't perfect. Get it great get friends to listen to it, get their opinions, or get a producer, but don't sit on material for years. And then when you release it, um, just make sure that you have lots of things planned to go at the same time. So you've got your YouTube, your Facebook, your Twitter, you've got all of your friends ready to share it for you, so that everyone is primed for this big explosion of promotion. And maybe, if you've got some budget, speak to a PR company and see if you can get in some magazines or something or see if anybody's interested in doing something. Have a launch party. See how many people you can get to one venue, hire the venue yourself, put on a buffet, great food, great drink, play a gig and have a launch party. Have balloons. That would probably help as well. Moving along. Dear Dario uh, are awesome and they put me on this list of people that get confidential uh, beta samples for, for new strings basically in development and I phoned up uh, and said do you mind if I make a video about these and I'm like no that's fine <laughs> so they're not that confidential uh, basically what these are are acoustic guitar strings with the MYXL core so I think these are going to sound sick I'm going to string an acoustic with these and see how they sound in a video coming up soon. I'm not gonna have time to do it now because when I string an acoustic, it takes me at least an hour and a coffee and a sandwich to really get them stretched in and tuned and it takes a while. So anyway, we're gonna try these out in another video. Um, but it says here, the crisp hexagonal core and perfectly round plain steel strings are made of our renowned NY high carbon steel. Uh, first played on the MYXL electric guitar strings, manufactured to the tightest specifications, the new wire's unprecedented strength and pitch stability, allowing you to pick and bend freely. It's amazing what you can write about strings. They're great strings, probably. I'll try them out. I'll let you know what I think it's. <laughs>
Recently, I did. <laughs> I played a session, and I thought I'd just talk to you about session work and what it's like from the perspective of someone that, that does it occasionally, and give you some inside kind of knowledges and thoughts about the whole thing. Um, session work is incredibly varied, and it can be sort of, um, could you make a ringtone uh, for B&Q? Or, or it could be, could you work on like a bleep sound for a game? Or it could be, can you sit in the pit here and just play an A chord when the orchestra goes like that? Or it could be, could you turn up and tour with Bon Jovi, like my buddy Phil? Or it could be anything. Um, and it's it's really interesting. Sometimes the pay is phenomenal. Sometimes the pay is awful. Sometimes the work is all around you and sometimes it's nowhere to be seen. It's this um, elusive kind of ghost of something that many guitar players chase as being the ultimate aspirational conquest. <clears throat> and I'm here to say that it's great, but it isn't the be-all and end-all. The be-all and end-all is a giant overlord end boss bee who will crush you with his mighty bee hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> the uh, let me tell you about some session work I did. I had a, a phone call from a, a, a company who had a job for Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels Honey. And um, they wanted some Christmas jingly guitar playing uh, to go along with three adverts that were going to run. And could I play the guitar on like in the background of this jingly advert? I was like, yeah, of course. Um, so first off, there, was, there, was, there wasn't really any budget, which is fine. Because I would do something like that purely uh, for people to go, oh, that's Chappers playing the guitar on that advert. And then they think about me and then maybe they buy something or maybe they download the music from Door Jail. Maybe they just think fond Christmas memory thoughts and feel warm inside. Um, and the next thing is I had two days to get these done. Actually, three days. Uh, an emissary from the company turned up to the London gig on the tour. And while I was on stage, I composed two of the jingles and recorded them into his iPhone for him to send back to Jack Daniels to clear or not clear the way it was played. And <clears throat> I wanted to tell you some of the the marketing sort of jargon that they gave me as a remit for the job. So the job was to do this. They wanted it kind of family, warm, you know, friendly, um, Christmassy, kind of Kings of Leon and kind of Black Keys. And they wanted it to sound like I'm jamming with my band and then I suddenly get a bit of a Christmas japery fun thing on and I start playing a jingle instead, kind of cheeky, chappy, guitar playing kind of guy. So what they weren't after was like Merry Gentmas. And what they weren't after was shred thon Christmas jingles. They wanted kind of you know, chordy playing kind of stuff. But the language they used was difficult for a guitar player to, to, to kind of work out what they were after because it was very, it was coming from a marketing department of people that I don't think played guitar. And that's my experience with practically every session I've ever had. They're like, could it sound like sunflowers? Warm family values. We're thinking, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They give you these phrases and words that kind of give you an idea. Uh, the second day, I had to send three more samples, and again, I was in a green room at a venue on tour, so I just used a ghost fret, I plugged into my sound tech, James, hey buddy, I called him Pringle, uh, his Roland Cube, and again, I used an iPhone to record samples from a Roland Cube and send them to them, and they loved them, and in fact, they wanted to use one of those as just th the track, and I was like, you can't, you can't use a sound sample from an iPhone as the track. And we're like, but it sounds great. And I'm like, trust me, you can't do that. So then I came home from the three-week tour, exhausted, and the next day I sat up in my studio and I recorded the, the jingles you know, properly, mic'd up a cab. I used uh, a Red Dwarf and I used an orange uh, 4x12 because it was warmer, a little bit fatter and warmer. Uh, I backed the mics quite far away to get a lot of the room in the sound, which is a trick Eddie Kramer taught me and you washed it in some nice reverb and made it all Christmassy and jingly. And I sort of pinged that to make the jingle bells and did all sorts of stuff. Anyway, sent that off and they loved it and it was, it was really good. But I just wanted to sort of take you through the process and some of the guerrilla tactics and some of the things to expect from random sessions. Um, 
don't expect to get paid loads. Don't expect to make a living from session work. Expect to make a living from teaching and selling products. Products could be things like, you know, backing tracks or your own music or t-shirts or coffee or something nice like that. Anyway, we have practically come to the end of our wonderful Christmas show of joy and awe. I want to wish you all a merry, festive season. Uh, merry feasting to ye all. And thank you so much for being subscribed and watching these videos. And uh, have a great, great time. And if I could reach through this camera and hug you all, I probably would. So <laughs> take it easy. Chap is quite considerably out.